einen Volkswagen müsste man haben. Volkswagen is a multi-billion dollar company, one of the largest in the world, and to quote the German magazine, the mirror is the symbol of the federal German economic miracle. The company had unethical beginnings, however, and what many don't know is the company's success can be attributed to the rise of Nazi Germany and Hitler's ambitions after being appointed chancellor in 1933. In the early 30s, Germany, like many other nations, still felt the effects of the Great Depression. There wasn't a car that the average family could afford. In fact, most cars were considered a luxury expense, so, in an effort to improve their economy, the German government created Volkswagen, which translates to the people's car. In creating this company, Hitler's goal was to essentially knock out two birds with one stone. With a car that's affordable enough for the average citizen, opportunities are created for people to work farther from home, which would help with the unemployment issue that plagued Germany after the First World War, not to mention the amount of jobs that would be created by the automotive industry. Hitler also deemed this essential for Germany's success in anticipation of World War II, which is why the company was created and state-operated after he came to power. On May 28, 1937, in Berlin, Volkswagen was officially founded by the Nazi party. By this time, private industry had already been rushing to create their own low-budget cars to be marketed to the average household. The government even attempted to produce the design through a partnership with private manufacturers. But even after heavy lobbying, producing a car for 990 Reichsmark wasn't an option. That was just too cheap of a price, which led the project to be funded through the Nazi party and operated by the German labor front. Hitler specified the car must be able to carry two adults and three children at a top speed of at least 100 kilometers per hour. This was an ambitious request, however, an automotive engineer who had previously been working to design an affordable car was the one able to meet Hitler's constraints. His name was Ferdinand Porsche. His design was small, and because the engine only had 25 horsepower, it needed to be aerodynamic. It later became known as the Beetle because of its round frame. Despite being relatively cheap, 990 Reichsmark was still a large portion of the average family's income. Because of this, people had to save up and buy it in full as opposed to purchasing it with credit. As you can imagine, around the time of the Great Depression, finance was an extremely delicate aspect of keeping a country from collapsing. So, in short, to ensure their currency had any value, the government had to maintain the gold standard. In order to do that, they had to regulate credit. Reducing credit meant banks couldn't finance large expenses such as cars, which ultimately reduced Volkswagen's sales. For the people who did participate in a savings plan, they'd be lucky to actually receive their car. When the war began in 1939, only a handful of cars had been produced for citizens. However, the demand for military vehicles took priority and the production of the Beetle was halted. Soon after, Volkswagen turned to a cheap and newly available resource. Slave laborers, mostly from Central and Eastern Europe. For the duration of the war, Germany forced millions into slave labor. When it comes to Volkswagen, there are no published figures for the amount of slave laborers that worked in the factory, and there most likely will never be. After all, it's only natural for Volkswagen to distance themselves from their past with Nazi Germany. Those forced to work for Volkswagen became intimately familiar with the Type 82, the military vehicle that was in production, which was also appropriately named the Ubelwagen. In German, this means bucket seat car due to the round shape of the seats, which were designed to keep the passengers from being tossed out of the vehicle. It was also designed by Porsche and was heavily based on the Beetle. The Ubel wagon was used for transport, and though it was lightweight, it was known for its impressive off-road capabilities. Despite it having two-wheel drive, its wheels had independent suspension, and it also had a locking differential, which meant the wheels would turn along the same axis despite any difference in traction. These features implemented on a car with a small body made it fairly versatile. The US eventually got their hands on several abandoned Type 82s and probed it for weaknesses in its design that could be exploited. The analysis was distributed to soldiers, and when comparing it to its American counterpart, the 4 GPW, better known as the Jeep, it was described as being inferior in every way. Except for its remarkable seating. Regardless of its criticisms from American engineers, in the scope of World War II, the Ubel wagon still compared well to vehicles from other nations. Let's take a look at the top speeds from different vehicles used in World War II. 
These weren't the most popular vehicles used in the war, but they were vehicles in the light transport or armored transport class from their respective nations. For reference, Germany's Ubelwagen had a top speed of 80 km per hour. The 38M Botond from Hungary and the Type 92 Chioda from Japan both had a top speed of 60 km per hour. Canada's C-15TA could reach 65 km per hour. The French Panhard 178 could reach 72, and the Italian Sahariana AS-42 could go 78. India's pattern carrier, the Soviet Union's BA-64, and the United Kingdom's Morris C-8 could all go 80 km per hour. And finally, the Ford GPW from the US could go as fast as 105. Okay. Now to give you an idea of how prevalent these cars were, let's take a look at the amount each country produced during the war. Italy made 152 of their main transport vehicle, Japan made 200, France made 941, Hungary made 2,554, Canada made 3,960, and India made 4,655. In order to fit the superpowers on the chart, we're going to have to change the scale to the point where Italy and Japan don't even appear on the grid. The Soviet Union produced 9,110, and the UK made roughly 10,000. Germany, however, was able to produce more than every other country named so far combined. More than 50,000 Ubelwagens were produced during World War II. That's an impressive number, but the United States makes it look absolutely puny in comparison. The US made more than 645,000 Jeeps during World War II. Despite Germany having an edge in production over neighboring countries, this number shattered the illusion of any advantage in mobility they had towards the end of the war. After Germany's surrender, Wolfsburg had been occupied by Americans, but the British would decide what was to become of that particular region, and with it, Volkswagen's factory. The British government considered several courses of action, one being the complete deconstruction of the factory for shipment to Britain, but unsurprisingly, this was ruled out. Eventually, a British officer, Major Ivan Hurst, proposed the factory continue production for British transport. After going through a leadership crisis, the company faced many trials, However, it was able to survive, and though the state still had some influence over them, the company was no longer treated as an instrument of the government. Before I end this video, I want to briefly share my experience with Belkin's power strips. When I was putting my setup together, I reached a point where my wire management was a real concern. The plugs for each of my monitors are pretty large, but even so, the Belkin was able to accommodate all of them. It also looks sleek and keeps things really clean. If you're in the market for one, I highly suggest clicking the affiliate link in the description and picking up one today off of Amazon. The cool thing about the associate program is even if you decide not to buy this particular item, any shopping you do on Amazon through clicking the affiliate link will help support the channel. I also have a Twitter, at meta underscore galactic, where I post about videos I'm making or plan to make.